So welcome, welcome to day number two of the Living Abundance Wealth Retreat. Today we are going to be talking about connecting with your higher self. So we're going to have a deep dive, a deep dive into connecting with your higher self. Um, before I want to do that, do that, I want to recap on yesterday on uh, embodying your wealth frequency, embodied wealth, and really developing a relationship with this part of you that I like to call your wealth queen or wealth king. Um, yeah, it's really really powerful as so many of you experienced and a little bit confronting right what your wealth frequency has to show you particularly when it comes to money but as so many of you experience there's this real coming home you know feeling so relaxed so at peace it's an aspect of yourself it feels really good and yet we can get also confronted by what she has to say what she has to to guide you into and this is part of the journey and this is what i've been practicing privately personally in my own life and business and i also support my clients to do as well um, is to develop a relationship with this part of yourself to connect with your part of this with this part of yourself to listen to this part of yourself to get curious to hear her and see what she has to say and my commitment to myself and my business is that i create an alignment with this part of myself my small self is still there my wounded self is still there my traumatized self is still there but we learn to hold these parts of the self as you rise as you listen because we really want you really want to be creating your life and business in alignment with that wealth frequency with your heart consciousness with that part of you that, that comes from connection with all of life, your body, the earth, the universe, and each other. So this is very, very powerful next level work. And yes, to keep rising in and to keep embodying your wealth frequency, part of the journey is a lot of the releasing of the old wounds. It's not comfortable, but this isn't about being comfortable. Heart-led leadership is not about being comfortable. We need to release this idea of needing to be comfortable to do this work. Yes, you're gonna sink into comfort as well as you open up to really looking after yourself, nourishing yourself with everything that you need to thrive. So for me, that looks like massages and spa days and you know, lots of time in nature and relaxing. There's comfort in there, but this isn't about staying in your comfort is a different thing. I hope that makes sense. So we are learning to listen to this part of yourself, connect to this part of yourself, embody this part of yourself, create with this part of yourself. And this requires you to be connecting in with her, well, ideally every day, I would say a minimum of four times a week, you wanna be coming back in with her. I start my day from this place. It's like connect with her before you write, before you make a video, before you share, before you show up. You wanna be coming from that place of embodied wealth and alignment and then listen to what she has to say. She's the most incredible leader in your life and your business. And yes, she will challenge you, <laughs> right? Um, and that's okay, that's okay. And you're gonna be growing into her and she's growing into you. There's no rush, there's no rush. Let us dive in to today. Take a beautiful deep breath into your body. Allowing all of you to land, there's a lot of energy. So sometimes we need to just stop and take a deep breath to help yourself digest. We wanna digest and integrate. Breathe in and welcome in everything we're doing here and take it into the body. Our trauma wounding, our wounds of separation can act like blocks and barriers to you receiving. So the more you can breathe and relax, open to receive, it helps you to digest and integrate what we're doing here, the energy that's here for you, to wake up these dormant, hiding, stuck, scared parts of the self, right? We wanna breathe in, hold these parts through the deepest love as we expand into that wealth frequency, welcome it here welcoming all of you here thank you thank you thank you you are safe it is safe it is time and it is simply time it is simply time welcome so i'm very excited about talking with you about this today we are going to be connecting with your higher self in today's session 
it's really important to understand what we are doing here. I'm going to do my best and I want to, I want to start with sharing just a, a few stories with you that I have been committed to following my inner guidance, my higher self and my life and my business for over 15 years now. I made a commitment to it a long time ago because it seemed kind of smart. <laughs> it seemed like it had some special information for me. Um, but it's very confronting, right? It's very confronting to follow what our higher self and our inner guidance is calling us into because it's out of your comfort zone. Everything that I have created in my life and business comes from my higher self, it comes from this higher wisdom. This part of you I see from the, kind of the heart, the higher centers, the brow, the crown chakras, it's connecting you up to this universal wisdom, the visionary part of you, this part is tapped into a higher perspective, the eagle, eagle eye view, so to speak. It's a part of you that can see what's available to you beyond your wounding and your trauma, beyond your own old conditioning and patterns that keep you very stuck and small, trying to keep you safe, but really keeping you limited and keeping you in, in separation. So this higher self perspective is really seeing what's available to you from a place of connection, from a place of unity, from a place of abundance, because that really is your true nature. And so this part of you is like a guide and navigator, um, showing you another perspective. But the, the thing about the higher self is it's not necessarily embodied. So what's so important on this journey is that we're also getting really embodied and grounded into those lower centers. A lot of the abundance and manifesting work that I do, particularly with, with conscious, sensitive women, is around getting activated, clearing out the trauma wounds and blocks around the base chakras, the sacral chakras, those lower centers, so that you can land ground and seed plants right here in the physical world. So this higher self is not necessarily fully embodied it's not fully here. So the journey is getting that higher self perspective. And then we want to take that, eventually take that aligned action in your life and your business and putting one foot in front of the other while doing very powerful releasing work when it, when it's necessary. So what can happen and what I've seen as the shadow wounding in the spiritual community is something called spiritual bypassing where we're all tapped into these high frequencies, doing all the meditation and all this beautiful energy work and it's light and love and it's, it's one love and we're all in this together and that's beautiful and gorgeous. But if it's not grounded and not connected, it's not embodied and it actually can be quite dangerous. I see some real dark shadow in the spiritual community of doing this spiritual bypassing. But why people do spiritual bypassing, it's, it's pain avoidance. It's not wanting to sit in the trauma and sit in the pain that is held within the body. So we pull out. I know this so well. I did it for many, many years. I came from a lot of trauma. I opened up this spiritual path. I started tapping into these higher realms. It was incredible. It felt like home. It was so beautiful. But I was kind of hovering above life, disconnected. And it's been a painful journey coming back home, landing back in. And so please know some of you are much more grounded and much more earthy and your journey will be kind of rising up. Some of you are all kind of vision and you're a little bit more disconnected. You tap into high energies and your journey will be coming down. But really we're, we're doing both. We want to be planting those seeds, creating really powerful, powerful, deep roots into the soil so that you can rise like a beautiful tree. Those branches spreading out, those flowers growing. Trees are my great, great teachers because a tree can only grow as high as its roots go deep. So please know I'm teaching all about tapping into your higher self. We're not going to use this for spiritual bypassing and for avoidance and pain avoidance either. But it helps us to get a perspective above the wounding, above um, trauma, above pain, so that we can get a perspective of what this is and then have that courage to go down in and take that bold aligned action. So this is the idea. We'll be coming to those other steps later in the week. Let's take a deep breath. Breathing in, bringing Lara intensity here, but it's very, very important. I, I honestly was so deeply shocked by what I saw going on in the spiritual community in 2020 
with a lot of bypassing, it, it, it shocked me to my core. So now for me as a facilitator 2021 and beyond, it's, it's really important. We have to do the shadow work. We have to embrace all aspects if we're going to really be powerful, heart aligned, effective leaders in the world, right? Effective leaders, grounding, making change on the ground level, like in the world. That is what is required. So thank you. Thank you. All right. So the very first thing, well, not the very first thing, my guidance uh, has been working with me for the last 20 years, but the thing that scared me the absolute most, I remember when I first got the message to make videos, to make videos and put them on YouTube. I cannot tell you that this was the most terrifying and confronting information that I'd ever heard. I was hiding as a healer, working in the clinic, a health, a health clinic in London, and I didn't do any advertising, any promoting. I was like, the universe will bring me clients. <laughs> and it worked to a degree, but you know, I was very much hiding. I was very much hidden, um, terrified. I didn't even tell people I was a healer. I, that's how blocked and scared I was. And so the first journey to say, my guidance was like, you need to make videos. It was just awful. And I don't know how long I sat with it for before I started making videos, but I'm sure it was at least a few years. It might've been a year, but it took me ages. And I remember I made my first one. And, uh, and I remember my hand shaking as I went to kind of upload the video on YouTube. So scared. So I want you to know that everything that you see me doing has been a has been a journey, right? Like it hasn't been comfortable. Now I love I'm fine being on camera. I love being on video with you guys. It's no problem. But there was a point where it was literally felt like I was going to my death. I really thought I was going to die. Very irrational, I know, but that's how strong the fear was. So. I just want to show that as an example of when you're getting guidance from your higher self, it may trigger you, it may be confronting. Part of being a courageous leader is finding a way to move through some of the discomfort as you're being guided to rise, right? Being guided to be more visible, to be more seen, to find your voice, to own your worth, whatever it is for you. It's going to trigger you. So we need to breathe into that. We welcome it as part of the process. Pain is a portal. Pain is a portal. We don't do bypassing. We don't do avoidance. We go in and we breathe with it. Hold yourself with the deepest love and care and know that you only need to take that next little baby step. But I'm jumping the gun. That's day five. We'll talk about that more then. All right, so there are many ways that you can use your higher self. And, and the, one of the ways that I use it is to navigate through challenge, navigate through challenge, to have this eagle eye perspective on things that are difficult. So things that trigger you, right? If you go into to anxiety, you go into fear or you know, frozen, you get traumatized, your trauma gets triggered, right? Um, if you get angry, you know, really frustrated, if you feel stuck, you feel really lethargic, you don't feel inspired, this is, these are ways that you can use your higher self, this inner wisdom, inner guidance to help you through those, um, I lovingly call your abundance blocks, they're just part of being human, right? Having these different feelings and experiences. The key is we don't want to get stuck there. It's absolutely normal and fine to have all of these different emotions. Trust me, I do. I'm very emotional. But it's about how to hold, listen, Support yourself through that and tap into what really life is calling you into, what life is calling you into. So it's like a guiding light. It's a navigator, your higher self. Um, and also, so your higher self is a business strategist. That's what I like to see it. So when you're aligned and connected, you're, you're, you're tapped into that wealth frequency and you're really, really in um, feeling that vision, you've got that guidance, it's really helping you to expand that vision. So it's showing you what is available to you. It's like always expanding you into a new level of your vision. So for me, I'm giggling because I find this quite confronting as well, where I'll, I'll arrive someplace, like maybe I've just posted that first YouTube video or whatever, and then there's, and the next level. <laughs> Like, can't I just enjoy this level, please and thank you. And so that higher self is, keeps expanding you into what's possible, showing you the vision of what you're being guided into, what is heart and soul aligned um, for you to be expanding into next. Um, so 
And the other thing that my guidance told me to tell you today is your higher self is here to navigate you through the challenging times ahead, through wobbly times ahead. We have seen what 2020 was. 2021 is a different year, but we're still going to be experiencing a lot of upheaval. As these old systems start to dismantle, right? the patriarchal system, the systems of um, systemic racism, all of these systems and structures that have been really hurting and harming life are starting to dismantle and dissolve, but it's not gonna go down without a fight. And so we're gonna see a lot of upheaval in the collective consciousness as well. And so you are really needed like a beacon of light, an anchor through these times of a wobbly change and it can feel sometimes like being out um, on the ship in a stormy sea and so you are really here to be a guiding light but you also need to keep coming back to that guiding light within so that you can lead without right so this higher self is here to navigate you through and guide you through challenging times ahead right so this is also how i use um, my connection with my higher self it's like okay what's going on here and what do i need and and what is the truth here or what is aligned for me here now and so it's coming back to that center point you know when the the waves start going it's like okay where is my center point where is my connection point and what am i being called into at this time where are my roots right how do i find these roots so it's very, very important. And your higher self will show you, navigate you through how to thrive through these times ahead, but also thrive through challenges. When I say thrive, that doesn't mean there aren't challenges. That doesn't mean there won't be pain, but there is a way to rise and thrive through the deepest challenges. So this isn't about being perfect and somehow hovering above, right? Like on the top of a mountain, just in meditation, which sounds really great sometimes but right we're here on the ground we're making positive powerful change um and it's time to you know buckle up but your higher self is here to find help you find the place of ease and flow even through the greatest challenges so it's being the calm in the eye of the storm or I, I always get the surfing analogy you got this huge wave that's just about to break on the surfer and they're just on their board so how to be the surfer in life, right? The calm in the eye of the storm or the sailor at the helm of stormy seas, just really focusing on where he's going, working with the elements. So we're in the center, we're in life, but we can find that ease and flow. It doesn't mean it's not easy. You're definitely gonna get bashed around by waves, but we wanna keep coming back into that alignment. This is something I recommend ideally doing every day. Again, a minimum of four times a week. It takes work, it takes focus, but I promise you the results are worth it. The results are worth it because even, even in times of struggle, you can have incredible breakthroughs going on. This year, this 2020 year has been one of the hardest years of my life with the sudden loss of one of my best friends. There's another, our friend Jenny here, she has lost her best friend as well. She was our best friend. Um, the coronavirus, right? I've had the coronavirus twice. I've been very, very unwell. I have long COVID now. I'm still struggling and recovering from it. The inner guidance is here to help you navigate through really hard times so you can still rise and thrive. It doesn't mean there isn't pain. It doesn't mean there isn't challenge. But what I've learned is that we can, there's gold in everything. There is gold in everything. And when we have the courage to dive in and listen, go into the pain, oh my God, extraordinary breakthroughs. Extraordinary breakthroughs. So not easy, not comfortable, but so, so important. So I know one more story, just I wanted to share with you really vulnerably. On January the 1st, I was in bed in floods of tears, in immense amount of pain. Uh, my long COVID symptoms flared up. I was having vertigo and dizziness. I couldn't really move, but I had this, what I describe as brain pain. It was horrible and very scary, actually. I lay in bed and I just stayed with the pain in my brain and I held it and I was like, I have a big event <laughs> starting on January the 11th. How the hell am I gonna do this? My higher self, my inner guidance, it's like calm connect was guiding me into the pain in my brain to, and I found this still point and then when I found that still point the pain in my brain actually left 
And I got to start this special diet that one of my dear friends told me about, um, which is to start this, it's an anti-inflammatory diet. Let's go and see this herbalist. Eliminate a lot of the stuff on my to-do list that's not necessary. Focus and you'll be fine. I've done all those things. And here we are today, feeling so much better. Extraordinary. So for me, this is kind of, it always feels quite next level. It requires a lot of trust and faith. It requires to take action. I had to eliminate a lot of comfort foods from my diet, <laughs> right? You know, things that aren't always comfortable. But I want to say that this part of you is here to support you and help you. But we need to listen. We need to go in and acknowledge. So take a deep breath. Breathe into your body. Right? This isn't about being perfect. This is about being deeply listening and deeply honoring of what is here and how to navigate through these times and through these times ahead. This is a big part of, of being powerful leaders at this time. Okay? And it can be beautiful and it can be fun and you can thrive in abundance. Right? We're here together. How extraordinary. Right? So many beautiful things are here for us during this time. Even through the challenges, there is so much beauty, so much that's opening up. The doors are opening. The doors are opening as old worlds are collapsing, right? So it's no one or the other, right? But let's find where the open doors are, where that flow is. It doesn't mean there aren't challenges, but we want to keep finding the open doors. What is the gift here? What is the gift here? There are many. As long as we're open, to receive them. Okay, so breathe that in. Breathe that in. It's really hard. We release victim consciousness with this work, right? We release victim consciousness and we go into, we are empowered leaders. We honor, hold. If you go into victim, we need to love that part up, which we'll talk about on Thursday. <sighs> okay, so what I wanna do now is give you an embodied experience of connecting with your higher self. And what I'm going to be taking you through today, I would really love to invite you, inspire you to keep connecting to this part of yourself, including that wealth frequency and also bringing in this that higher reference point, that, that eagle eye view part of yourself that can see the bigger picture of what's happening, right? That embraces all of life. Okay. So we're going to dive in and we're going to ask this part of you some questions. We're going to ask this part of you some questions. And what I, because of time, what I'd like you to do is focus on one area that you would really like to work with. So for example, for example, um, business, your business or your purpose. Maybe if you don't have a business yet, you're, you're activating your purpose. Money, money finances, lifestyle, home, relationships, health, maybe family. What's an area that you would really like to work on? So I'd like you to have a little think, I'd like have a little think about what you want to bring into this session today. And we're going to really tune in. So one of the things that I do all the time is if there's a problem or a challenge, I go in and I connect to my higher self and ask for guidance. What is this? <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> Might be one of my questions. Or where is the gold here? Where is the opening here? What is available to me here? Because often what is happening is our old programming, our old stories, our old experiences, our past wounding and trauma gets activated, especially in challenging times, right? And so we're gonna come and talk about that day four, but for now, we wanna tap into that higher perspective and use this as your guide. What is available to me here, right? Staying open, staying open, which can feel very vulnerable. It can also feel very vulnerable. And we've been taught to shut it all down, right? So we're doing the opposite. We're going to open it up, get really curious. So again, let's bring that childlike quality of wonder, like what's possible here and go in. 
No, there's different ways for you to connect to your higher self. You need to, um, you might already have a relationship with your higher self, which is great. You can meditate with your higher self. You can journal with your higher self, connect, uh, go and connect in nature with your higher self. Some people find it helpful to, to move a little bit, to get into movement, put conscious movement. Find the way that you really tap into this part of you that's the all-seeing, all-knowing. This part of you will never talk to you from a place of fear or criticism or limitation just so you know so your higher self will always speak to you in a in a, in a very kind of open clear drama free way okay so um let us dive in and have an experience let's dive in and have an experience so get nice and comfortable and sit up you can lie down but just be where you might drift off if you lie down have your paper ready to write down any insights that come through Okay, deep breath into your body. Deep breath into your body. And welcome. Welcoming your beautiful higher self. And I see this part of you tapped into your, your heart consciousness, around the, the brow, the crown chakras, these higher realms, also universal wisdom. Depends on your belief system. Some people have the experience of tapping into spirit guides or beautiful beings that are supporting from other levels. Um, but really it lies within you. It also lies within you. Um, it, it ultimately is a full body experience, right? Um, but let's just imagine that it's these higher realms for now. We're welcoming in this higher perspective. The all seeing, all knowing part of you, welcome. This exists within you now. Let's welcome this part. Take a deep breath and welcome this part of you now. We're welcoming this higher self, inner guidance, inner wisdom perspective that is here to guide you through, to support you. It is guiding you into a whole new level in your life and your business, right? We breathe with any discomfort that may come up. We hold the wounded, traumatized parts with the deepest love and care as we get curious, start exploring with these higher parts of you. We need to hold the wounded part as we rise, right? So welcome and let's bring in that area of your life that you want to work on, that you want support with, let's welcome that in now. Welcome that in now. The more specific the questions that you have, the more clear the answers. And so I'm going to have to leave that with you. If you have specific questions about specific areas, you can ask your higher self and let it guide you and answer your questions. But what I want to do is just hold space now for you to have a relationship, have a communication with your higher self, and let's get curious and ask, like, what is available to me here? Or what am I being guided into? Or what does this part of my life need? And let's breathe and listen. I'm gonna hold space and you can ask specific questions. And let's see what comes through for you today. Keep breathing into your body and just honoring exactly where you are now exactly where you are now breathing in breathing in welcoming that higher self beautiful guidance let's just breathe you can journal or just sit and be with anything that comes through for you today
And see if you start getting messages or visions around certain things, of, of the vision for what's available for you in this era of your life, or things you're being guided to do, you can ask questions and journal with your higher self, journal with that inner wisdom and see what she has to say. It's really, really beautiful. It's really fascinating. And it's a, it's a relationship again to develop with yourself. And so please spend more time with this. This will be part of your home play today is to spend more time with this part of you. So please let's close with a huge honoring of your higher self. This is the diamond within and without. This is such a most sacred part of you that is you. It is a part of you. It's not separate from you, but the wounds of separation, of disconnection, keep us believing that that's not us, you know, we're not worthy, we're not good enough, um, qualified enough, successful enough, whatever enough, the not enough wound keeps us in separation from our true abundance, from our creative power. So it's so, so important to start honoring and acknowledging this part of you as a part of you, a part of life, a part of an inner wisdom. And you're gonna be learning how to integrate this part of you and embody this part of you more and more as you journey on this path. So please take a moment to honor and acknowledge this part of you. I bow down to this part of you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When I learn to honor, trust and respect this part and get curious, get curious and know that you still can choose. You can choose. If you don't like what you hear, you sit with it for a while. There's so many things that I get guided to do. It takes me time to digest months, years even. It took me seven years to actually get down to writing my first book. When there's resistance, when there's, you know, all sorts of stuff we need to move through to step in and start embodying what your higher self your wealth frequency is calling you into. We are seed planting. We're setting the foundations. We're building. It takes time. Please be patient with yourself. This isn't a quick fix sort of thing. Some things are ready now. Some things are literally just a mindset shift, an energetic shift. Most things start from that place. And then in terms of action in the world, it can take time to build. So please be patient. Please be patient. Thank you. So, your home play, something to sit with in your own time from today um, is um, what messages does your higher self have for you? And so I'd like you to spend a bit more time and see if there's any other messages that your higher self has for you. You can focus on a specific area of your life if you wish. And what do you need to do to strengthen your connection with your higher self? What do you need to do to strengthen your connection with your higher self. And this is part of what you're gonna be actioning beyond this space in your own life. Sending you so much love for now, bowing down to you. Please bow down to yourself. And thank you for today and for being here and for all that you are.